Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a logarithmic system with natural logs. We have a to the power ln b equals e and ln ab equals 2. And we're going to be solving for a and b values. I'll be presenting at least two methods and let's see how this goes. So this kind of looks like a non-standard problem because we have a at the base. One of them is kind of exponential and then we have ln b in the exponent and the second one is just the log of a product. So we're going to be using properties of logarithms, maybe sometimes the definition and so on and so forth. So let's start with the first method. For my first method, I want to be able to replace something with something else. So let's go ahead and do this. From the first equation, since I can't take out b easily, I could probably isolate a, right? Let's raise both sides to the power 1 over ln b. So I can basically write a as e to the power 1 over ln b, which can then be substituted here, right? Great. Let's go ahead and do that. It's going to give us ln e to the power 1 over ln b times b, and then the whole thing is equal to 2. Now at this point, we obviously have different ways to proceed. One of them is using the definition, so let's go ahead and do that. Since this is a natural log or the base is e, we can go ahead and write this as e to the power 2 equals e to the power 1 over ln b times b. So one thing that's a little challenging about this problem is to be able to simplify it because we kind of have like a very non-standard situation. For example, what is e to the power 1 over ln b, right? And you probably know what e to the power ln x is, right? That's equal to x, but we don't have that. We have the reciprocal of the uh, natural log of b. So how do we handle this? Again, we could use exponentials. For example, b can be written as e to the power ln b just by using this identity. So if you can't tweak this one, we could probably tweak the other one. So let's go ahead and write this as the b as e to the power ln b, and then we get the same base, which is nice, because now we can go ahead and combine these two things. You see, with a little identity, or some important identity, I, didn't say, I shouldn't say li little, but uh, by doing a little bit of uh, a trick, we can make this more manageable. So let's go ahead and add the exponents. We get e to the power 1 over ln b plus b equals e to the 2, and from here, oops, I forgot to write it as ln b, not just b. I got stuck at b. And now we added the exponents because they are being multiplied. And then that equals e to the second power. Which means we can now go ahead and equate the exponents, right? Or set them equal. So this means I can set ln b plus 1 over ln b equal to 2. And then from here, solve for ln b and eventually solve for b and then plug it into solve for a. A lot of work, but that's basically what it is. So what can I do? How, how can I solve this? Well, this calls for substitution. So let's go ahead and call ln b t. And actually, I'm going to use c instead. So this is going to be c plus 1 over c equals 2. Multiply everything by c and you get 2c or not 2 see do you see what i see hopefully you do and i'm going to put everything on the same side and what you should be seeing is that we have a perfect square on the left hand side in other words completing the square gives us the following and from here we basically get c equals one all right but what is c c is ln b and by definition since this is e from here we get b equals e is a constant euler's number which is about 2.7, and that's what we're getting from here. Make sense? Cool. That's B. Now we're going to solve for A, and then we have to do the other methods. So if B is equal to E, let's see how we can use it. Uh, probably I'll use the first equation, the top one. So I know that A to the ln B is equal to E, and B is equal to E, which means ln B is equal to 1. We already know that. So from here, we're going to get a to the power ln b, which is 1, equals e, which implies that a equals e as well. So a and b are both e, which is interesting because they're equal, and you cannot tell that right away sometimes, but that's what ends up happening. So let's go ahead and take a look at the second method, and we might even get into a third method if, you know, 
we can find something. I don't know. We'll see if that works. So a to the power ln b is equal to e. Here's what I'd like to do with that. I want to go ahead and uh, natural log both sides. And for that, I will just replace our place to ln in front of these two things. That's going to be real good. You know why? Because then it's going to move this to the front. So that's what's really cool about it. Like whenever you have an exponential equation, you can't solve it. Or maybe the base is also a variable. You can ln both sides. And let's say this is equal to 4. I don't know. And then from here, you're going to get hopefully something meaningful or some special function can be used like Lambert's W function, right? So let's see how this goes. So ln b is going to be moved to the front, multiplied by ln a. And ln e, as you know, is 1 because it's log a with base e or log e with base e rather, right? Great, so how is this helpful? We got the product of ln b and ln a, and guess what the second equation gives you? Okay, let's go ahead and unwrap it. This is the log of a product, which can be written as ln a plus ln b. Great, we have those identities which you should definitely be familiar with because now this gives you a system of equations. And now what we can do with this system is solve it and it's very easy to solve actually I can go ahead and set ln a equal to x and ln b equal to y then my system becomes x plus y is equal to 2 and x y is equal to 1 so I kind of need to solve a quadratic if you remember Vieta's formulas allows you to write an equation uh, if you know the sum and the product of your roots and let's just use a different variable how about z in this case z squared minus 2z, or not 2z, plus the product 1 equals 0. From Vieta's formulas, we're allowed to write. And obviously, z represents x and y at the same time, because it's the equation whose roots are x and y. Make sense? So from here, we can find z minus 1 squared equals 0, which means z equals 1. There's only one solution, which means x and y are equal. You could also get that by just isolating y from the first equation, write it as 2 minus x, and then plug it in here, you're going to get x times 2 minus x equals 1, and then eventually you're going to get this equation, which is the same as this one, because remember, x is a solution of this equation, so you can replace z with x, as well as with y. Make sense? So far so good, I hope it does make sense, and then basically that's what you're getting. Another method which you could probably quickly think of, just to, you know, add the third one right in there, is substitution. I could probably get something like this, maybe replace ln b with something. But the million dollar question is, how am I going to proceed with that, right? If ln b is equal to something, how is that going to help me? Or maybe I should just, suppose I expand the second one, but I still don't natural log both sides, because then that will be the same as the second method, right? So how do you deal with, with a system like this without natural logging both sides? In this case, you could replace ln b with 2 minus ln a, and then plug it in here. That will be a to the power, oops, that's kind of went through. That should be 2 minus ln a. And then here you're going to replace ln b with that, 2 minus ln a equals e. And then you can kind of proceed with that. But again, that involves some complications because you still kind of have to, you don't have to, but um, maybe it's better for you to natural log both sides. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.